Good to be here again this morning, just to be able to once again share from the scriptures, things of God, and specifically we're focused this week on discipleship. I'd like us to worship the Lord this morning, but before we do that, let's just pray. Father God, thank you for this morning, Lord, for the opportunity to magnify your name and give you glory. May you continue to be magnified. Lord, not our problems, but the goodness of God even as we end this week. May your name be exalted above all. We give you all the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Of you. 
As we start this morning, let me read this passage of Scripture in Luke chapter 6, starting in verse 12. Let me read this passage of Scripture before we dive into uh, some of the concepts that we can glean from this passage. Verse 12 of chapter 6 of Luke, and it says, In these days he went out to the mountains to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. This is Jesus himself. And when the day came, he called his disciples and chose from them 12 whom he named apostles, Simon from whom he named Peter, Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip, and Bartholomew, uh, Bartholomew probably is Nathaniel, and Matthew and Thomas and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon was called the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and on the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirit were cured and all the crowds sought to touch him for power came out from him and healed them all. This is a passage of a scripture to show us at least a perspective of what disciple is all about. What a disciple is all about. When we study the Greek of this word, that's basically where we get the word mathematics. No wonder why a lot of people <laughs> makes mathematics their favorite topic. or they, It's either you love it or you hate it. But the main theme of the word mathematics or the word disciple basically sometimes are just relegated to a simplistic definition. But if you deep, deep dive into this passage, or the, into this word, it has a deeper meaning into it that I'd like us to grasp and I hope to embrace this morning as we move along. Now, it's more than just being a learner. Now, to some, when you say a disciple, it's making Christians better Christians. We go to other churches, so we find a Christian, and we try to make them better Christians. For them, that's discipleship. For us, discipleship starts off with a person who have not gotten to know the Lord Jesus Christ, who have not heard of the gospel, and they, and they go through this journey of experiencing Christ's and then experience community, and then from there, being used of God for the, to be a blessing to the world. That's basically a spiritual journey, and that's the life of a disciple. We're going to look at that today. So once again, disciple is more than just being a learner. It's being attached to the teacher. Now, I don't want us to be a fan of a teacher. I'm just saying that the meaning of that basically means a follower. Or, to make it simply, make disciples. To make disciple. That's the deeper meaning of the word disciple, not just a regular learner. Now, having said that, we will um, uh, dissect this even more as we go through this passage of the scripture. And there are three, uh, I would like us to see these uh, uh, three dimensions of Jesus' connection seen through this Luke and Gospel. We're going to look at these. Uh, dimensions of relationship that Jesus had looking at this passage of scripture just to show us that, that Jesus exemplified a life of a disciple. Now, the first one is worship. It's upward connection, Jesus' devotion to his Father. And we're going to look at that in this passage of scripture. When we say disciple, we're talking about a person with an upward connection. He's, he's uh, a vertical relationship with God, his devotion to his Father. And we see that even in Jesus, Jesus' life. Look at verse 12 so far. It says here, In these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. First things first. When we talk about a disciple, it's a, dis a disciple is somebody who is a follower of Christ's. 
For those of you who are making disciples out there, make sure that you make disciples of Christ, not a disciple of you or your disciples. This is my disciple. We don't say that. We say they are disciples of Jesus, and I count it a privilege to help them or inch them closer to a relationship with Christ. We want every person that we get to meet to encounter Christ through the gospel, and that's what discipleship, the, the start of a discipleship, journey, a relationship with God. Christ exemplified that. He was in the mountain praying to God, his Father in heaven. Now, we, we, we get to, uh, uh, there was, a, there was a, 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 um, a theologian who studied, a theologian and, and studying about the young people of today, and he basically com came up with a conclusion after interviewing hundreds of uh, young people in the West, and he discovered that what young people are looking for is that they shy away from cultural Christianity and they are riveted to Christ himself. A lot of young people in the West are setting aside cultural Christianity, but what they're really looking for? A relationship with Christ himself. That from th there alone you realize it's not about the cultural uh, uh, milieu or picture about Christianity, but it's about a relationship with a person. And that's what young people are longing for, a connection with God himself rather than just merely having a religion. What a, an amazing discovery. So I, I exhort us today, uh, whether we're making disciples, starting a victory group or starting a small group with young people or same demographics, same uh, uh, singles like you or a senior citizen or businessman or something to that effect, it'd be good to bring this up before the Lord first. In prayer, in fasting, we do that. We pray and fast as a movement um, every first part of the year, uh, mid-year. Uh, when we start a small group, we spend the next four weeks praying and fasting, believing for people to uh, come to know Christ through uh, the small group, and we get to do that. We seek God first. This is a spiritual endeavor. It's just, this is a spiritual journey, so we focus on our connection with the person above. The second one, uh, uh, when we talk about discipleship, is our inward connection. Uh, Jesus' deliberate effort to choose his followers. Inward connection. It's letting a person experience community. And that's what a discipleship is. A disciple is somebody who has a connection with our Father through the gospel, with Jesus through the gospel, and recognizing the need for a community. It, you cannot be a disciple and yet isolated in an island by yourself. That cannot be. You cannot say, I want to follow Jesus by myself and I'm a disciple. No, no. You cannot be a disciple by saying, I have a connection with God, but I don't want, I hate church. I don't want other people. It's just me and God. That is not discipleship. We're talking about discipleship here. Oh, by the way, this person who made the research about young people, you know what he had discovered? He discovered not only that young people are longing for a relationship with Christ himself, not through a, a cultural Christianity, but they're trying to ask these questions. The first one is, who am I? Which is which can only be defined by the gospel and the relationship with God. And number two is, where do I fit? Yes, that has been the longing of a lot of young people today. Where do I fit? A sense of community. You know what Jesus did right after from the mountain? This is what he says in verse 13. And when the day came, he called his disciples and chose from them 12 from whom he named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, Andrew, his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, son of uh, son who was called Zealot, Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Now, this is a, for me, a funny list of people <laughs> because some of them, they're just, they just mentioned the first names and then some of them, they, he needed to describe them like Judas, son of son of James, because there's another Judas. Because Judas' name is a regular name during that time. Even the word Jesus, the name Jesus is a regular name. 
And so in order for that person to be, to be, to, to be differentiated from the other, he has to give a, a second nickname, a, a nickname to that person in order for him to be differentiated from the other. Uh, uh, that's why uh, Simon, who was called the Zealot, because there's another Simon whom we call today Peter. And so he has to delineate those because of the common names. But the rest, he just called them Bartholomew, Philip, Asius. But notice how he named Judas. He didn't just say Judas Iscariot or from the town of Iscari Is uh, uh, Iscariot. He's Iscariot, a guy from that little town. But he says who became a traitor. Do you know that Jesus' small group and relationship with other men, were, it wasn't perfect. In fact, one out of 12 became a traitor. It was even written in this Bible that 2,000 years later, we still look at Judas as a traitor. We don't even bother to name our children Judas today, unless you, you're cursing somebody. And, and it's not because, now this is the lesson here. It's not because you have been hurt and and, and experience pain because of a person who betrayed you, it doesn't mean that you throw away. It's like you don't throw the baby with the bathwater. You don't throw away relationship because you were hurt before or you were betrayed before. And so therefore you don't trust anymore. That is not a good excuse for us not to be needing community. Our need for community is greater than the pain we had with the person who betrayed us in the past. We are relational beings. We're born to be in a community. You want to be a disciple? Having a relationship with Christ through the gospel and a, an experience of a community. And it just happens sometimes the community is not perfect. But we need it. We all know that. We've experienced isolation the last at least two years of pandemic, you realize the effect of a person with no connection with others, being isolated by yourself, it will destroy you psychologically. That's why today we're, 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 we're faced with so many problems, mental health and all, because of that issue. We are born for a relationship. First with God, with others, fellow disciples, just like what Jesus did. And the last one, as I end, is... It's an outward connection. In other words, Jesus' dedication to reach the lost world around him. He wasn't just devoted to the Lord Jesus, uh, to our Father in heaven. Jesus wasn't just devoted to his Father in heaven in prayer. But he was also, uh, we need to realize that he was also deliberate in his effort to choose his followers and his community and at the same time, now he is, uh, we realize that he is dedicated to reach the lost in the world around him. And we see that in verse 17. Let me read that again. And he came down from with them, together with the disciples, and stood on a level place with great crowd of his disciples and great multitude of people from all Judea, Samaria, and Seacos of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirit were cured, and all the crowds sought to touch him, for power came out from him and healed them all. What are we talking about? We are not just here on earth to enjoy the blessing of our relationship with the Father, the blessing of kononia or relationship with one another in a community or in a church or in a small group, but for that blessing to pass through us so that others will be blessed as well. And the greatest blessing that a person can receive, to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what discipleship is all about. Relationship with our Father in heaven, relationship with one another, and relationship with the people out there. That's what discipleship is all about. No wonder why Powell, Dr. Powell had that discovery among young people. That the very need that they were looking for is actually answered by being a disciple of Christ. Who am I? That could be solved by a relationship with, with God through the gospel. 
Where do I fit? That can be solved by an experience in a community. And what can I do to make a difference? Let your giftings, your resources, and, and your presence be a blessing to the rest of the world. And the greatest thing, gift that we can give to others is for them to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, as I end today, I remember this person, an engineer uh, in a German automaker company. Um, and he had an invention in 1959. And that was the three-point seatbelt, safety seatbelt. And prior to that, thousands of people are dying because of accidents. But when he discovered this, it was such an amazing discovery and invention. Well, they were forced during that time, all invention to be patented. So he has to patent it. But in spite of that, automakers in the world adopted his three-point seatbelt. One day, he was asked by a reporter and says, aren't you worried that people have been using your invention without even any compensation, giving any compensation? And, and without a second thought, he said what he said, and this is, this, this is comment really amazed me. And this is what he said. There are just things in life that is too good not to be shared. And one of them is his invention of that three-point three safety seatbelt. Millions of people are spared because of that invention. If he charged one dollar for all the cars that have been released since 1959, he could have been, uh, he, he could have been a multimillionaire now. Could you imagine 400 million cars had been released since 1949 up to 1990? He could have been a multimillionaire, but he didn't charge because the same way with his mindset, there are just some things in life that is too good not to share. And I hope that you have the same heart for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is so important we want to make sure Everyone's get to hear it. So I, as I end today, I say this. Jesus effectively modeled relational discipleship, not just for the 12 to emulate then in the first century, but for us as well in the first century. Let's emulate the pattern of Jesus of being a disciple. Let's worship God again this morning. And when I see you face to face there at the end of all my days jesus in you i will remain my dwelling place you're my dwelling place in you amazing, uh, wonderful week that we had. I'd like us to pray again and end, and I'm sure we're going to be having an, a fantastic uh, time together as we experience community this weekend in the churches we get to go to and attend. May the Word of God uh, inspire us again this weekend as we worship the Lord together in all these different places. May His name be glorified, and may your faith continue to increase as you hear His Word again this coming weekend. Lord, thank you for this uh, opportunity once again to 
uh, be defined who we are. We are disciples who are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, designed to have a relationship with you, with the church, with one another, and Lord God, with the desire to reach the world with something that is so important that we cannot afford not to share, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.